Hey traders, hope you guys are well today. Um, in this video, I want to talk to you about some of my past, you know, and some of the things I totally screwed up when I first started trading. And my only hope in doing this video for you guys is, um, is to maybe help you see the light of the tunnel when it comes to trading these markets and and um, and trying trying to trying to figure this trying to figure the whole thing out, right? Because when I first started trading, I'm just like. I just couldn't figure it out. I'm like, how did the successful become successful? What is a good trader? You know, and all this sort of stuff. So, um, I, I want to start. You know, I want to start from a point of, you know, I went for a few years of just absolutely hell, up and down, up and down. I did really well for a while, and then I sucked. And I did really well for a while, and then I sucked. And that was my first two to three years, you know, and I did really well for a while, and then I borrowed money, and I, get, I personally guaranteed, I personally, I personally um, guaranteed him back 25%, so I borrowed 200 grand, because I thought if I had more money, I could make more money. Um, the, the hard thing about that is that I actually gave that money to someone else, he lost it, then I was personally responsible for it. Um, so I actually didn't lose it from trading. Um, and then... But that put so much pressure on me, then I started screwing up big time my own trading. It was really interesting because I was doing well with my trading. And then I had this pressure where I borrowed the money, I freaked out, I gave it to someone else to trade. He lost it all. I actually made money. But as soon as I had all this pressure on me to start to make some money again, uh, uh, start to make some money not only to survive and live and pay for the mortgage and all that sort of stuff. Um, and at this time, me and my wife just got married. Uh, this was 2000, uh, 2005, 2005, 2006, somewhere around there, yeah, 2005, 2006. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so, and so what ended up happening was so, I started to recognize that when I didn't have to trade at all and I didn't have to actually make money, like it wasn't, it was, it was good. Like I just sort of sat back and just, you know, just waited for those really good trades, right? But then suddenly when I had this massive debt, now I actually had to, I personally guaranteed him 25% by the end of that year. And now I was $200,000 in debt. No, $250,000 in debt because I guaranteed him 25, 25%. So now here I was $250,000 in debt. And, you know, and then so... My trading started going to hell in a hell basket. It absolutely just started crashing like no. And I thought, fuck. Um, you know, what's what's going on here? I th and, and I just, I couldn't connect the dots. I was, but I was so stressed out. Because now I'm thinking, how, man, what's going to happen here, you know? And it was hard. I'm just like, you know, and... And, and I, again, I, guess I couldn't connect the dots. I suddenly went from trading well to losing a whole bunch of money really, really quickly. And because I started forcing it, I started rushing it. I didn't know at the time, right? I was just sat back like, why the fuck do I do this shit for? Why am I doing this for? You know, and so, you know, I, you know, and, you know, as I started to go through, um, as I started to do that, um, I'm arming because I'm just, I'm actually a bit, a bit emotional about it actually. But, so what ended up happening was, I actually had to sell the house, had to move back with my mother and father-in-law's, we moved into her spare bedroom, it had this old mattress and then we had to live on there. Because what ended up happening, I actually ended up pretty much losing almost all, all of our money as well too, you know, about three months later, after hearing this news that someone else lost this money from a friend of mine. Um, and now, um, and, and the hard thing, I, f I felt like shit because my friend actually borrowed this money, um, from his house to give to me. And then suddenly this guy who lost it, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't do anything because it was just contracts in place and all that sort of stuff. So I moved back to my mother and father-in-law and, and so I, I started to... I started to, you know, I started to, to, you know, what ended up happening was, here I am, my wife was actually working, I think she was working as a manager at that time, or my ex-wife, should I say, but when we are married, she was working, I think, as a manager at Red Rooster, um, and uh, for you guys, if you don't start to have Red Rooster overseas, it's more like a, it's more like a chicken shop, um, 
and uh, and um, the the thing is is that uh, yeah so she was doing that and and so I just said to my father and I said listen this here's the deal and so I learned how learn how to negotiate right I said here's the deal I need to borrow five grand from you and I need and I need you to give me eight months worth of rent free but at the end of that eight months, I will pay you all up at that time. Um, I'll pay you up all all up at that time, which would have been the equivalent to all the rent that, that I would have owed you. So if I was paying them, um, I think it was $300 a week from memory for us to stay there. And that, that took all of the, care of the, the rent, plus also electricity and all that sort of stuff of, of, our, of our half. So I think that was that 600, 600, uh, six, uh, so 300 a week for us. Um, so I think it was like twelve. Was that six hundred? Yeah. So about twelve hundred. Uh, twelve hundred dollars a month, um, and then times that by six, that gives us. Uh, I forget exactly what it was, but anyway. And so I, I said, listen, just give me. And I said, just just, just give me. Uh, I think it was. I think I said. I, th I think I said six months back then. Um. Actually, I think it was six months, maybe 12 months. I'm not, I forget exactly what I negotiated with my father-in-law. But I said, listen, I know I can do this. He was the, here's the situation what actually happened. And I just need to take the pressure off myself. I need to get back to what I know I can do and start to, start to move forward. But I just, I suddenly started to realize that the past, why I was actually making money in the past wasn't because I was good a good trader. It was because I got lucky, and and this was a hard hard turning point for me because I remember one night trading that money, and because I was still under this stress and pressure, I remember sitting there and I just I remember going to bed one night just crying because I lost fifty percent of my entire account in one night, fifty percent, and I thought, man, this is absolutely shit. Like, what's going on here? And, that's, and as I said before, that's when I started realizing that it was based on luck that I made money in the past and not based on a skill or, or me following a plan or me even being a good trader. Because what I realize now is there's two different things. You've got the trading system and you being a good trader. If, you're a good, if, you're, if you've got a good trading system but you're not a good trader, which simply means you're consistent, you're disciplined and you're patient, those three words, consistently show up every day, discipline with your plan to only take in that and then patient to, to, to waiting as long as you have to for those setups, then that, that's what goes into a good trade. I didn't realize at that time. I thought, crap, man, what's going on? So I, I, I started getting some coaching from, from mentors and stuff like that and started sort of seeking out some help. And, and what ended up happening was, um, one of my earliest mentors, uh, you know, I went to him and he said, listen, John, just, just follow this plan for a while. Um, don't do anything for three months. Just follow this plan. You know, don't do anything else. I don't care. You are not to trade for three months, but just follow this plan. And uh, I said, okay, no problem. So anyway, so I did that, and um, and I started to realize at, at that time that the reason why he was successful was because he was just following the plan, and I, I was strictly stuck to this this one simple plan. And all it was was one moving average on the chart and volume, and I was trading stocks. Whether, but you apply this whole thing to the futures market, the forex market, right? Without, without in the volume. So therefore, if we're doing the futures market and the forex market without the volume, it was like just the chart and one moving average. That's all it was. But it was a pattern on the chart, and then I started getting like, you know, a high ninety percent success rate. So what ended up happening was, um, I then started to, you know, I then I'm like, oh man, this is really good. This is good. I, I know what I'm doing now. Cool. So anyway, so, so cut a long story short, um, you know, uh, I started to trade again. I started following the plan that he gave me. And the hardest thing was sticking to that plan, right? Because there was times there where I didn't trade for a whole week or, or two weeks or three weeks. Sometimes a month, there was no trades. I'm just like, man, I've got this rent coming up soon. You know, I've got, I've got to pay all this rent for me and my, wife, for me and my ex-wife, my wife at the time. You know, um, I, I've got a son along the way. I've got to figure out how to make some money so I actually be, so we can get another place as soon as we move out of here. Um, you know, it's like we've got to, I've got to figure this shit out. Um, and uh, 
And so, and, and, and that's, that, that was my thought process, right? But I realized that I couldn't go down that path. So anyway, so what ended up happening was, um, kind of long story short, I think it was about eight months after the initial process of my mother and father-in-law, um, I actually got myself to a point where, um, I, I think I got, I got myself to a point where uh, I could, uh, I just... All right, um, <laughs> where you know I could I could move out of, move out of my mother and father in law's place from my trading, um, and it was hard, right? Because because my mentor said, "Listen, don't do anything but this here. I don't care how long it takes. You just wait for this setup." And it was hard, but I, I ended up moving uh, end up moving out. I saved enough from my trading to for us to get a new place, got a new car, bought new furniture for the house, and that was the starting point for me. Um, you know, and then, and then I think it was a couple of years later, I took care of that debt with my friend. But the thing is, is that, um, what I, what, how, what I, what I started to realize after the fact was that I start, I was, I started being very sloppy. And what I mean by that is that I had the plan, but then I was taking these other trades well too. I'm like, oh, well, I can take this trade here and take this trade here and take this trade here, right? And I thought, hang on, and I started realizing I was starting, I started starting to go back into old habits, right? Which is starting to trade. Start, starting to take more trades and you know half my trades probably more weren't sticking to the plan and then I started actually having a few really bad months in trading I thought what's going on here I'm actually trading the plan so I sat back and I thought am I actually trading the plan like and what's what's oh, what's going on here I don't know what so anyway so I said I said you know what I'm gonna start to record every single trade I take um, and I think I think one of my mentors. I think I went to him, uh, and I think he said that. He said, "Listen, John, you need to be you, you, the, the hardest thing about trading is accountability. There's no one there to keep you accountable. So this is what he, this is what you need to do. You need to record every trade you take, and then come, when you come and see me in a couple of months or whatever it was at the time, you got to show me the trades, show me the trades that definitely met, met the rules, and show me the trades that didn't meet the rules. And and you've got to have a spreadsheet of when you got in, when you got out, how much, and so on and so forth. I'm like, okay." So what ended up happening was I started to record every trade I took, and I and I didn't focus on the the, the what what was happening for the month. I said, okay, individually, I'm just going to record every trade I took. Um, and then at the end of the month, for me personally, I think it was like maybe two months or three months after that process, I actually went and saw my mentor to show him the spreadsheet. But for me personally, I think I actually went back over that month, and then I realised that I actually had a losing month that month as well too. I'm like. What, what, where did I go wrong? Was it the system? Like, wh why did I lose money there? Like, I, I, I couldn't get it. And this, I, and I thought, hang on a minute, I've started, man, I'm going through a bloody roller coaster here. I started doing well at the start, I got lucky, then I blew up account and mother and father in law, then I started trading a while, and now a couple of years later, I'm starting to go through this very hard period again. Like, what's going on here? I, I just, I, I just didn't get it. Um, and then I started to, when I started to record every trade, I started to record it and then I started to review it. So one month later, I said, you know what, I'm going to review every trade I've taken and I'm going to, I'm going to go back to those trades and I'm going to be honest with myself, did this trade meet the plan, yes or no? Because it's a very simple plan. Does it, does it, does it, does it meet these rules, yes or no? Um, and what happened was, I started to realize, hang on a minute, I've had a losing month. I've taken... I don't. I forget the exact, exact amount of trades here, but I think it was like something like seventy percent of the trades I took were not the plan, and thirty percent were. So if I took ten trades, three percent of the three, three of the trades actually met the rules, and these other eight, these other seven trades I took didn't meet the rules. And then I started to realize, hang on a minute, but if I just took those three trades, I actually would have had a really, really, really good month. Um, but I actually had a bad month because most of my losses came from the trades that I just got into for the sake of, oh, well, it looked good. I thought I knew what was going to happen and this whole thought process. And I thought, why, why the fuck did I just take all these trades for? Like, oh. And then I, and I started, when I started looking at it, I thought, hang on a minute. And that's when it started clicking to me, this whole less is more thing in the market. And, and then I started looking, I thought, so if I took less trades, 
I would have paid less brokerage. Um, you know, and oh, by the way, when I started trading, brokerage was like eighty dollars from minimum, minimum. It was like eighty dollars in, eighty dollars out. Now it's like a buck in, a buck out. I oh, know it's crazy for brokerage. And anyway, so, um, so then I thought, hang on a minute. So if I took less trades, I'd have less stress, and I've actually would have had a really good month this month. I would have made, I think it was something like, I don't know, I think I, I think I lost like 10 grand or something that month. But if I just stuck to those three trades, I think I would have made like 20 something thousand dollars that month. You know, with, with the positions I was taking. Now I had a good risk management and so on and so forth. I, I, I just, they're just, they're just, they're just numbers from memory. Um, it might have been more, might have been less somewhere there, but I knew that was, the profit would have been a lot more if I took less trades. I'm like, what the hell's with that? So I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to make a conscious choice this month to try my best to stick to the plan ever more. And then the next month came, and guess what? I re I recorded every trade I did. And then, and then I, I at the end of that at the end of that second month, I looked at all my trades, and I started real I started realizing still about forty percent of the trades that I was taking were based on not the plan. I think I think that next month I actually had a good month that month. But I realized I could have had a much better month. It's, I, think, I think I made maybe 10 grand that month, maybe 15 grand that month. Um, and, uh, and, but, but I think from memory, it was like, but I could have made, you know, 25, 30 or something like that, 25, $30,000 that month from trading. I could have made that money, but I had all these other losses that, that came from, from these other trades I shouldn't have taken. Um, I thought, what? Okay, I, I've had a good month. That's good, right? I didn't lose money like last month. <laughs> but what's going on here? So I looked at, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm still taking shit trades. I'm still taking too many trades. And then, um, and then the following month, um, the following month, um, I started getting a lot better. Where I got to about eighty percent of the trades. Eighty percent of the trades I took met actually met the plan, and twenty percent of the trades didn't. And that's where my I went to my mentor, and he basically said what I already knew, um, and it really, really, really started to hit me there. And then, but then what I did is over the three month period, I went over the last three months, and I calculated how much money I actually would have made, how much money I would have made just by sticking to the plan. I would have taken, um, you know, especially the first month was eighty twenty, right? So twenty percent of the trades I would I would have taken so many less trades. Um, and and so on and so forth. And then I, once again, over the last three months, over that last three, that uh, over the three month period that I did this. Um, by the way, I still do it to this day. I record every trade I take because sometimes I'm human, right? I fuck up and I'm like, man, why did I take that trade for? Um, you know. And the the thing is, is that uh, um, the thing is, is that. Uh, um, yeah, I, I still do it to this day. So anyway, so the, the biggest thing for me was how much money I actually left on the table and how much money I would have made just by sticking to this set of rules. And that's when this whole game for me started to shift of, it's not the lucky, it's not the, the successful trade is never about being lucky or making money from the markets. It's all about being able to stick to the plan. But I had to shift my mind to start linking pain to taking crap. And I always say to my private clients, if you take crap, you're going to get a lot of crap. And, um, you know, if you take good, you're going to get good, you know. And I always, I always, there's a saying in, in my private client group, when you do, you do, and when you don't, you don't. When you do follow the plan consistently, you're going to do well. When you don't follow the plan consistently, you don't do well. You know what I mean? Um, now, if you go to John's, J-O-H-N-S, freetraining.com, johnsfreetraining.com, you'll be able to join a, um, a training that I'm doing and you'll be able to see the, the strategy that I'm trading right now. It's very, very simple, right? It's really just, really just, it's, it's the chart and, and one moving average. For, and for stocks, I use volume as well too. Um, it's very, very simple. So go to johnsfreetraining.com and you'll be able to see the strategy I'm talking about here. But, and that's, out of that became a process for my clients that I get my clients to do which is recording, reviewing, and approving. Recording, reviewing, and approving. So recording every trade, because us individually, right, we're, we're different, but we, we but we can't see what we're doing. And if we're not tracking what we're doing, we can't, we, we can't, we can't, 
we can't improve, right? So I always say, every single trade you take, put into a spreadsheet. Record every trade. And then after a month, review it. Review what you're doing, and then ask yourself, where do you need to improve? Maybe, maybe you are taking the good trades, but maybe your management needs to, you know, maybe you're quickly, you're maybe getting out too quickly. And by you, you know, maybe the way you're managing these trades is, 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 is like that. So one of my private clients uh, did the exact same thing, right? He, uh, he, um, he, he's doing really, really, really well for himself. Um, but then he could have made, he could have made, I think it was like 200% more just by not freaking out and by, by using the exit rule that, that I taught him. Um, which is just a close moving average, by the way. It's nothing, when I get into it, it's like a nine moving average that, that I use um, for that. So anyway, recording, reviewing, and improving. And that really made a massive difference in my career. And still, guys, still to this day, right, sometimes I fuck up and sometimes I have losing months. I haven't had a losing month in a long time. But if I start to see myself having a couple of losing trades, but again, I, 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 re, I record everything I do. Um, and what I do now is probably every three months, I say, I would actually go back all over those trades and I'll go back to those trades and I'm like, okay, where do I need to improve? And by doing that, it keeps me on track. So now what I do is I link so much pain to just taking crap because I know at the, I know at the back of my head, or I know, I know from the bottom of my heart or the back of my head or whatever that by me taking these other trades, because I went through this process so many times, that whenever I take these trades, that, that is not the plan, or you know, or there might be a setup there, but there's some doubt there, right? <laughs> you know, that there actually the, the, there might be some doubt there. Um, that's where I've linked so much pain to that because taking taking those setups because I know most of those trades are actually going to lose me money, and I couldn't get to that point if I actually didn't go through through this process. Um, and so now, what? Now I'm very, very, very happy just sitting, sitting on my hands and not doing nothing, you know. And if there's no trade for two weeks, three weeks, a month, and there's actually no trades at all, well, I know that if I did take trades that month and there was no trades that month, I know I actually would have lost money that month because of me taking trades based on a thought or you know it just looked good and stuff like that, you know, or. There was no real plan there, right? Um, and what I mean by a plan is that you have a trading plan, a trading setup. You know exactly what you're looking for on the charts, and you trade that consistently. Um, that's what I mean by a plan. So, and and so yeah. So and and that by that process there, that's actually kept me disciplined, um, and it's allowed me to to grow my account even more and more and more. And, and last year I had I had my best best year ever uh, when it comes to my uh, trading there. And it all came from this one of this process. One of the most powerful processes I've gone through myself is recording every trade, reviewing, and improving. And all what I was doing was how many trade met this set of rules, and how many didn't, and what was the win loss ratio, um, and all that sort of stuff. And then you start to realize that less is more in the markets. And by me rushing and forcing and doing all, being very, very, very active in the markets all the time instead of waiting for those yes trades, um, I can, uh, um, yeah, basically if I do that, then I'm going to relax more um, and I'm actually going to make money overall and it's going to be easy. Uh, it's going to be easier, right, if I just sit back. So I hope, guys, that that this has shed some light on maybe some things that you can do in your own trading, uh, regardless of what system you're following. Um, but on top of that, guys, that one of the biggest things that stops you from moving forward is just just probably the process that I went through myself and, and just going through that. So um, it was really, really, really tough for me to go through that mentally, you know, and, and on, on, on the other side, I can now see where... Um, uh, on the other side now of going through all that, you know, the last 15 years or so now of trading, um, I can see where I went wrong and where I'm at right now, where most traders do go wrong. And I see it all the times on forums, on, on Facebook groups and stuff like that. They're like, I'm thinking about buying Facebook, what do you guys think? And that, that's the wrong approach because trading the market is all about a probability, right? Trading the market is all about, okay, I have this setup, but 
just because it's a good setup doesn't mean it's going to make money. And just because it, if it doesn't make, if it's a setup that means a plan and it doesn't make money, it doesn't mean it was wrong. Most people think, oh, well, I made money, so I got it right. It's like right and wrong has got nothing to do with you being successful long term in the markets. Um, my mentor always said to me that, you know, most people would rather be right than rich. He, he says most people would rather be right than rich. I'd rather just, uh, I'd rather trade it and make some money. And I never understood that for a long, long, long time. And what he simply meant was that every time he, every time he throws his thoughts and opinions at the market, um, he's always wrong, which means he actually loses money. But every time he has his has his plan and he waits for that plan and then he trades that, um, you know, he the he ends up making money, and you know, and he just without without picking and choosing because the trades that he absolutely thinks are definitely going to run off for profit, some most of the times they're actually losses anyway, even with the plan, because there is a win loss ratio, you know, and the trades that he thinks they've got nothing and no chance of actually making a profit, but they still make the plan, actually run on, and. Uh, that's what I always say to my private clients, you know, you've got to get to a point where you've got to give a not, not give a shit factor because it's never about one single trade. It never, ever, ever is about one single trade. And from that process, if you can start to put that together of not trying to, trying to make money on, on any given trade, but realize it's just a process throughout the entire year and you're trying to make, a, you're trying to make money, you're trying to make money over the, over the, over the year, which was one of the most, one of the worst mistakes that I ever did was trying to make money every week. You know, I mean, or we're trying to make money every month. I have a goal there every month. And one, one thing I realized was that I need, to, I need to make a yearly income from this. Uh, I need to make a yearly goal. Um, you know, and uh, because if I, if I set myself a monthly goal and there's not a lot of trades, and it's very, very quiet that month, then before I know I'm gonna force it, I'm gonna rush it, and it's gonna set me behind. So anyway, guys, uh, I hope this helped you out. And uh, I hope that you guys can do so well from trading it's just it's never the market that gets us it's us that gets us